Welcome back. As a prelude to doing real text mining, we first looked at some text related functions that R provides from the string R package and then we started looking at regular expressions. Now the use of regular expressions is of course very important when it comes to text mining because when you've got text in order to analyze the text we need to be able to find out parts of text that match something or to divide text into individual words and then process something so those kinds of things so we need to have powerful capabilities to process text before we can actually do mining and do things with it one important part of that is regular expressions which we've already started looking at so today what I'm going to do is to continue forward with some additional text mining and regular regular expression concepts now within regular expressions we've already looked at how we can match patterns for uh, for characters for vowels and for uh, uh, things like uh, groupings right not groupings actually but in terms of options like for example uh, anything that's a vowel or anything that's a digit so we've looked at those things and we've also looked at anchor points like find me text that starts with something or find me text that ends with something so we've looked at all of that a very important aspect of regular expressions is repetition and that's what we look at today uh, at least that's what we will start with now okay so there are three important symbols that are used when you talk when we talk about repetition and those are uh, the question mark plus and star so you use the question mark to match a particular character or any any pattern that precedes it zero or one time right so if a pattern doesn't occur or if it occurs once then it will match the thing right so that's what uh, zero or one time and plus is any one or more something that occurs one or more times star is anything that occurs zero or more times so we'll see examples of how we can use these kinds of patterns so for example suppose we want you've got this sentence 1888 is the longest year in Roman numerals etc expressed in Roman numerals that's 1888 okay so now we want to see uh, what kind of regular expressions can match any part of this uh, this particular string right so we can do str underscore view and if you recall of course we've been using uh, using str underscore view to uh, visualize the, uh, the regular expression matching now in reality of course we will not just be happy with uh, just viewing the matching we would like to do things with it so we'll start doing that shortly uh, in the later part of today's class but initially we, in order to understand regular expression concepts str underscore view is a very useful function okay so let's see an example of using uh, repetition matters okay so here we see str underscore view x and then the regular expression we are using is uh, cc question mark and of course it's in quotes because we are using it as a regular expression okay now does this string x match this or not and if so where does it match right so this is saying I want the string to definitely contain a c an uppercase c but uh, it could then followed by the uppercase c it could contain 0 or 1 c Right. so clearly this text matches that it's got a C and following that it's got 0 or 1 C okay so it'll match and that's the match you see here C C right so the first C is this C and the next one is the optional it either has a C or no C it's got something else but in fact it has a C okay so it's got a 0 C or 1 C so this has got 1 C and it matches okay so that is question mark now let's look at this regular expression here does the string x match c c plus which means it's got a c followed by one or more other c's right so one or more so it must have at least two c's uh, successively two successive or consecutive c's okay so clearly this does match it it's got a c and it's got uh, one or more definitely it's in fact got two more uh, so one c and two more so this regular expression will actually match this whole uh, string of three C's and that's exactly what you see here it matches all of those three C's here uh, now incidentally when I'm showing this of course in the results when you see string view you'll see the entire string uh, but I'm showing you only the relevant part of the string just for uh, space considerations okay so that's uh, that's really what's going on here that's why 
what you see on your screen when you run it would be different from what you uh, what I'm showing you here because I'm showing you only the relevant part okay so you understand the use of plus it means one or more so this regular expression will actually not match ACT right because this is supposed to have one C followed by one or more C's but this has only one C not followed by one or more C's so this ACT will not match this whereas of course this matches that regular expression okay so here we are combining uh, things we are combining the plus with the optional part of it which is if you recall from the previous class when you put something within square brackets we, we it, what we are saying is one of the things which are in the square bracket so we are saying it is C followed by an L or an X one or more times okay so what is repeated could be an L or it could be an X so this will match CLL it will also match CLX it will also match CLX LX LX as many times as you want because what is repeating is either L or X so it will match so in this case you've got a C uh, okay so you've got a C here followed by L X X X V so obviously what is repeating after the C is either L or X many times so what will happen is that it will match C L X X X as you see here okay because you've got a C so the first C match is this one and then we are saying either L or X one or more times so clearly we've got L X X X so either each of these is either L or X one or more times okay but it's one or more times uh, uh, and therefore it, it works okay so that's that's what this match is okay so now there's another thing also uh, here we are only able to say zero or one one or more right what about exactly two exactly three that kind of thing okay so that's what you're seeing here uh, C exactly two C's right that is anything that contains two C's so that will match here two C's right so when you put this it's going to match only this many characters when you put a plus it's going to match the longest possible uh, match that it finds okay so that's the difference here we are saying show me a place where C occurs exactly uh, two times and that's what it's matched here okay of course two or more could be this two comma that is lower limit upper limit that's what we are doing here with the comma so it as long as it has two or more show it to me and of course again that works here because you've got three C's here consecutively so that matches okay now of course this is different from from this right uh, actually yeah it's it's it is quite similar to this really because we are saying a C and then one or more here or more so here we are saying it's two or more so CC is actually two or more okay so it's it's actually somewhat similar to that one the point here is within uh, curly braces you can put in a lower limit and an upper limit and it'll match so two or three clearly it'll match the same thing here okay so we've got all of these ways in which you can use uh, the repetition symbols so we've got uh, we've seen the plus we've seen the question mark we haven't yet seen the star that I introduced earlier we will see that uh, soon uh, and then here we are talking about how we can put in upper lower and upper limits let's look at some more examples so for example suppose we wanted to find out uh, the words that start with three or more consonants again we'll use our old words list which is part of the string R package so you could say str underscore view words comma and three or more con starts with start with three or more consonants so therefore we put the anchor the caret anchor to say it starts with and consonants <clears throat> In order to define consonants, what we are going to say is say the vowels and then say not, right? So again, we are going to put this within square brackets to say uh, any one of these. And we are saying not vowels, therefore consonant. So this square bracket caret A E I O U, this defines a consonant, right? Because we are saying any vowel and we are negating that. So we are saying anything other than a vowel is fine. And then now we are saying three or more of these right and then we have already put the starting anchor so obviously this is going to match any word that starts with three consonants so if you run it let's get into our studio and actually run it so that's the command right here okay so I'm going to execute it by clicking the run button and you see here these are all the words some of the words that has that starts with three consonants so for example Christ 
CHR, all three are consonants, uh, dry, all are consonants, fly, all are consonants, and so on. <coughs> so that's one example of how you could apply something like this. Or words that have three or more vowels in a row, right? Here we are not saying it should start with that, but it should have three or more vowels in a row anywhere. So we can already see how we can specify a vowel, right? We didn't include the start anchor because we said it can appear anywhere. A, E, I, O, U within square bracket says any one of these characters is acceptable, so which is vowel, three or more, so we put the repetition. <coughs> okay, so obviously one thing I did not point out is that this uh, specification of the repetition applies to whatever just precedes it, right? So when we say within uh, curly braces three or more, we are saying three or more of whatever is immediately before it. Okay, so that's another example, having three or more vowels in a row or two or more vowel consonant pairs in a row, right? That is, we are saying vowel consonant, vowel consonant. Uh, so that, that would, so vowel consonant and two or more of them occurring together, okay? So again, here we say, okay, it, should, it can occur anywhere, okay? So we don't have the, the starting anchor carrot. So we are just saying A, E, I, O, U, vowel, not of A, E, I, O, U consonant, right? And then we put this whole thing in parentheses because we want the vowel consonant pair to repeat some number of times, right? So the, we put this in a parenthesis and then we put our uh, curly braces, the repetition curly brace two or more, right? So now this two or more that we are specifying here applies to the previous element, which is because we've got it in parentheses, it includes both of these, right? So this would be one vowel consonant pair. We are saying let that repeat two or more times. So if you run it, we can see this example. Uh, three or more vowels in a row. We have seen this already. Vowel consonant pairs. I'm going to run this. Okay, so you see here uh, uh, O L U T. So O is a vowel, L is a consonant, U is a vowel, T is a consonant. So O L U T. Okay, so here you see another example uh, which is a little more. So O R I T. Right, so you're only seeing two pairs, you're not seeing more than that. But if there were three, that would also work here. Uh, so in fact, that's here, A, M, E, R, I, C, right? So that's three vowel consonant pairs that also matched, okay? So that those are the ways in which you can use, uh, use these uh, repetition annotations. Okay, so now we look at another topic, which is called grouping. In fact, grouping we've already looked at, right? When you use parentheses, that's grouping. We created a group here and said this group should repeat two or more times. So grouping we've already seen, but now we're going to uh, look at something that is interesting, which is called a back reference. We'll see that uh, in the next slide.